All right, so this is worksheet nine and it's just applications of sequences. Um, again, I'll put up how to put it in your calculator, but I'm not gonna show all the answers. So you need to be typing them in yourself. Um, read this one to yourself and tell me what you think. Arithmetic, geometric. Asma said geometric. Why? Okay. So take the previous height and multiply by what? Yeah, 80% or 0.80. We don't need to subtract from 100 because this already says that's what it will be left, right? You'll be left with 80% of the height after every bounce. Okay, what else? We can't do this without knowing what the first term is. Why are we going with u sub zero? Okay, this is the drop, right? Not the bounce. Okay, so you could put it in your calculator and just scroll down to term six. Anybody want to use a formula? Without messing with their calculator, sequence mode y equals thing? Could you say 400 times 0.8 how many times? Six. Yeah, it would just be 6 times because you wouldn't need to do 6 minus 1 because you didn't use it. This is really a term 0. Either one of those should get you the right answer. And I don't remember what it is. 104? Okay. I thought I heard 404. Things wrong. Yeah. I kind of feel like some of those super bouncy balls you buy at the grocery store, they could definitely go higher. If you throw it with some force, I guess that would be right. Not if you. Yes. If I put my calculator in sequence mode, the top term up here would be zero. And then the third line would be 400. And the second line would be u sub n minus one times 0.8, nothing else. We're looking for term six, 104, is that what everybody's getting? Okay. All right, read this question to yourself. Think about it for a second. It's got some crazy business. This is centimeters per week. This business about over the course of a year, it just means the formula is only good for a year, but we're not going to, okay. Represents the weekly height if it's seven meters tall today. What's the first issue? Centimeters and meters. Let's take a vote. Should we work in centimeters or meters? Meters? Okay, so what do we have to do with this one? Okay. Now what? Arithmetic or geometric? What? How come? We're adding... So all it says is write the sequence. Oh, recursive. Isn't that what we did first for the last one? So we're going to say you take the previous term and do what? Okay. If if you did it as centimeters, then your first term would be a 700 or your zero term or whatever. I don't care which way you do it. But... um. Then we have this seven meters that it was started at. What do we want to call that? Yeah, because that's not after one week, right? This is a little fishy because it doesn't actually say weekly height of the tree. Well, it doesn't say after one week or whatever, you know? So hopefully I would be a little clearer on a quiz. Oops, we decided to call that zero. Sorry. All right, good enough. Number 21, this question is not 
arithmetic nor geometric, okay? I know that because it's growing by a percentage. Do you read the question yet? And adding, right? It's actually, this is, this is decaying by a percentage, right? It's losing 25% and adding 6,500. All right, I just wanna, this is a little side note. When you have a sequence like this, guys, do you, I look at that and I see adding and multiplying, but this is explicit. So if I put in a one, I get out a three, I put in a two, I get out a five, I put in a three, I get out a seven. It's clearly an arithmetic sequence, right? This was just a simplified form that gave, this is a recursive sequence that is both multiplying and adding, and that's why it's not arithmetic or geometric. So how can we write a recursive sequence so that we can put it in our calculator? First term, uh, current enrollment be eight years from now. What do you think? One year from now is not 35,000, right? So I'm gonna go, this is term zero. Then what did you say, Miranda? <clears throat> U sub n minus one, the previous term, right? Okay, I wrote that really messy. Let me just try that line again. Where did she get 70.75? Okay, it's losing 25%, so it's 100 minus 25 means 75% are remaining. We had a lot of questions about this one. Is there an easier way to do this? Is there another way? Could you change the 6,500 to a percent? But you actually can't because the percent is always of the last year. So the 6,500 is wouldn't be a consistent percentage of anything. All you want is what for an answer? Term eight. And you just want a whole number, guys, right? Because it's students. Now. Um, does this approach something? If it continued to do this, would it eventually approach a consistent value? Can you scroll down like term 40 or 50? It does, right? Because the percent of change would approach the 6,500 and then or would approach equaling out so that it, anyway, yes. Okay, so it would eventually. So someone asked today, could you change this to an explicit formula? I think we could put in, if, if we graphed this, it would be doing this, right? It would eventually level out. So I think we could do some kind of a regression with that information that would come up with an equation that would work, okay? That's all I could come up with for an answer to their question. All right. We did this question before, yes? Read this to yourself, buying a car, blah, 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 paying it off, how much is left after 12, what are we gonna adjust payment so we can pay it off? Okay. The first issue is this question was mean and didn't tell us what. We need the monthly interest rate. Remember on the other ones, it always had like one in parentheses that had already been what? How we change the annual to monthly. 
divide by 12. If we divide this by 12, we could put 0.1325 divided by 12 in our calculator, like in the formula, or we could just round it and say it's about, Point zero one one. Everybody okay? It, it, I moved the decimal over already here. Did you get one point one percent ish? Okay. If they're charging interest onto our account, it's being added, right? We owe them all of the money plus that. So we're gonna have one oh one point one percent or one. Oh, I can't write one point oh one one. All right, that was a mess. Now what? So the starting balance of our loan is Have we made any payments? So what do we want to call that? Term 0. After that, every month, what is the first thing they do as soon as we borrow it? I'm going to multiply by that 1.011. And then what? Subtract 200, add 200. This is the balance on our loan. So when we hand them $200, the balance does what? Goes down. Because balance means what we still have to pay. All right. So it wants the first five, can I just say like the first three terms because we don't want to write all five of them down? Does that sound like a plan? Anybody getting anything? Is the first one 6877? Okay. So write a couple of them down. Three of them. We'll call it a day. And then it says, what is the unpaid balance after 12 months? Anybody getting 5,000 still? Thirty one, is it like thirty five almost? You go over onto that term. All right. Is that a three or a five? Man, I wrote that badly. This is Four, three, one. Okay. All right. What do we have to do to try to? Okay. So you still owe a lot of money. If we actually scrolled all the way down um, in the other class and it was like 40, I don't remember, 48 months, 44 months until you paid this off at $200 a month. If you bought a $7,000 car, do you really want to still owe money after four years almost? $7,000 car, I'm not guaranteeing it's going to work. You don't pay it off until 45 months later. Well, and not everybody can pay half of it down, but I think you better not take out a four-year loan. You better take out like a two-year loan because then it's going to start needing repairs and stuff. Okay. We need to make it paid off in 12 months because we want to get this knocked out. 12 months. So what are we going to change in the equation? The 200. Um, I'm going to go to 500. We still owe $1,000. Six hundred is getting close. Six hundred, we still owe three hundred and thirty dollars. 
for some reason I had in my mind it was 626, but it depends if you want it just over or just under, yeah. 625, 626, depending if you want it over or under a little bit, yep. Somewhere around there. Now, I don't know about you guys, but 625 or 626 would be a really big monthly car payment for me. But you'd pay a whole bunch less interest if you paid it off that fast. I like Miranda's idea that you should at least have some money to put down because then you wouldn't know that much either. What's wrong? 625.88. Thank you, Curtin. <laughs> All right. Anybody think they can do this one? Read this, give yourself a minute, write a formula down. <laughs> Discuss it with your neighbor. Look over and look at their paper and laugh. No. Morgan, tell me something you wrote down. Anything? Nothing? <laughs> okay, but they're selling 10%, so how much is left? So if we want to know how many flowers are left to grow, I think we need to multiply by 0 0.9 or 0 0.90. Oh, I heard a plus 4,000. What do you think? Because they plant some more or something, right? What do we want to call that 50,000? Because it says after 20 years, and this is definitely not after one year, so we want to call it zero. All right, so then all you got to do is scroll down, right? Uh, what's the other option if you don't want to scroll down? Yeah, you can go to second window and go ask auto and then you could when you go here you'll just type in a 20 or a 35 okay this one would also even out eventually I think I think it's around 40,000 flowers that would eventually even out I don't know 40,000 how many but It's what? Okay, so it evens out right at 40,000? Okay. All right, can you do this one without me or you need some help with all this vocabulary? First 10 terms. Where, what's the first term? Second term. Woo, we're partway there. We need 10 terms. What does this mean? For every term where you're greater than three or greater, so starting with the third term, you do this. Starting with the third term, you do the sum of the two preceding terms. What does that mean? One plus one is two. Now what? One plus two is? Three, two plus three is? Okay, until you have 10 terms. I think the last one's 55, but you gotta have them all in between. Tysir, wake up. Okay. I, I, did I remember wrong? Is the last one 55? Okay. I thought I was, but I thought maybe I was crazy. What's wrong? Do you need help? Oh. I, 
I'm confused. I didn't give an answer. So how are you checking? What did I get? It, if she she said that's what it would approach in the end if she went down like 100 150 it doesn't okay All right, back to this question. Easier, read it, think about it. More complicated or less complicated than what we've been doing? Yeah, the formula is less complicated. This is straight up what kind of a sequence? Why do you say that? Because they're just adding how much? So that's called our D value, right? The difference they're adding? Okay, what is this $10,000 profit the first year? Is it sub-zero? It is its actual profit the first year, so I would say it's one, yep. Because we want to find what they make the 10th year and then the total for the 10 years. Okay, so on your quiz, down in the corner, it would say, oh, not that would say arithmetic and it would say this and it would say whoa kidding again that's an s whoa those look familiar okay can you do those use those to do this question i'm sorry to hear that <laughs> we're looking for the 10th term what are we going to do to what? We don't have a formula yet. 10,000 plus nine. 10 minus 1 or 9. I would just use 9. Yes. That's their profit the 10th year. Second half of the question, though, says what? The total. So now we need the sum for 10 years. What's that going to look like? 10 divided by 2. First term plus that number, right? It, is it 400 and some thousand? Yes, no, maybe. What did you get here? Good. 
Are you using times instead of plus or something? 10,000 plus 7,500 times nine. I got 77,500 for the first one. You good there? Then if we add 10,000 and multiply by five, we get that number. Okay. This is a auditorium seats thing again, except it's got a little twist. It says a lecture hall has six seats in the first row, eight in the second row, 10, 12, da, 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 out through 12 rows. So this is row one, row two, row three, row four, out to row 12. And then rows 13 through 20 all have the same number of seats da, 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 that you had in, I don't know why I have that at the end here, sorry. Mm -hmm all the way out to row 20. So it kind of looks like this is if we just envisioned it, there's, it gets wider, but then after it hits a certain point, the last few rows are all the same size. Does that make sense? Okay. So how are we gonna figure out the total number of seats? Okay, so we need to figure out how to add these up and these up and then add them together, right? Okay, this is the sum of 12 terms. So we write what? 12 over 2 times 6 plus, ooh, do I know how many seats there are right there? Not yet. What do we got to go back and do? The 12th term is the first term plus 2 11 times. So this is a 28, and this is a 28, and all these are 28s. All right, so how much in the first 12 rows? Thirty-four times six. I got two oh four. Okay. This is the issue, everybody gets this question wrong, because how many rows are there from row 13 to row 20? Why God gave me fingers. <laughs> 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. There's eight rows. We did 1 through 12, but we have to do both 13 and 20. We did 12. There's 20 total. So doesn't that mean there's 8 missing? Does that make more sense, Claire? <laughs> I, I, I seriously... <laughs> You don't think so? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just check in. All right. Eight times what? Eight times 28. And then we have to add that on. We have 204 plus eight times 28 is the total. All right. Go in the other direction. The bottom row has 60 bricks. The next row has 58. The next row has 56. Okay, I didn't do that very well. Anyway, um, we want the total number of bricks if the top row gets us down to 10 bricks. So the sequence goes 60, 58. What's the difference? Nope. The difference is negative two. Okay. 
Um, we need the sum of the sequence. We know the first and last terms. Do -do 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 -do. We don't know how many rows there are. So we got to do this 60 plus uh, the difference was negative 2 and minus 1 times where that finally ended us up at what are we going to replace this guy with over here? 10. Yep. I had to scribble a lot before I could erase, right? Okay. Now we can find n. I'm going to subtract 60, divide by negative 2, I got 26, so in here goes, Don't want them watching to know, right? <laughs> when they watch the video, they have to do it themselves. Don't yell out the answers. You're good. Yes. <laughs> Too many bricks for me to carry. Did she get an answer now? My favorite question ever. Okay, before we start this question, I'm going to pay you a penny March 1st. It's going to double every day, but I'm firing you on April 1st. So you only get paid 31 days. Do you want the job or not? Any Anybody? Because everybody says, no, I'm not going to work for a penny a day. Even if it's doubles the next day, it's still only two, right? At, at the end, okay, but it takes a long time to get there. You work for next to nothing for a couple weeks, but we get 31 days in. What do you think? How can we do this on our calculator? It's more fun if we look on the calculator. The first day, you make how much? So u sub 1 equals 0.01. I'm going to do pennies, yes, or dollars. And u sub n equals u sub n minus 1 times 2. This is geometric. If you wanted to just figure out what you made the 31st day, just the 31st day, you could do this. Yes. What do you make on the 31st day? Anybody scrolling down or typing it in? Okay. You get a million dollars on the 31st day, over a million dollars? Okay. That's not what it asks, though. What does it ask? So we need the sum of the 31 days. Anybody remember the sum for the geometric sequence? We just did this one yesterday. A1, 1 minus R to the N, which you can, might want some extra parentheses over 1 minus R. So 0 0.01 times 1 minus 2 to the 31st. Don't need to do n minus 1. Okay, that'll give you the sum. Can I retire after March? Oh, I got 21 million. Did anybody else get 21 million? Oh, are you doing the home screen or what are you doing? 
All right. We got to keep going. We got five minutes and a couple more questions. If everybody overthinks this question, if I tell you not to overthink it, how are you thinking we should do this? You can do 1 minus 0.25, or you could do 0.75. <laughs> this is where everybody overthinks it. It's just five years because after one year would be term one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So after five years, you just do to the five. If you want to call this initial term and you're looking at, I wouldn't even, it's just straight up how you learned it in chapter five. Okay. All right. A vacuum pump removes 60%. So how much is remaining? We're going to go through this one quickly. What percentage of the original range? What do you want to use for a percentage? we got to start with some. Um, what percent is in there when we start? So if we do 100% and we multiply by 0.4, how many times? Six strokes. Uh, after six strokes. So this is not after one stroke. I think it's still six. Because the first time you would multiply, you don't get a term that you don't multiply. It has to multiply. Is it point four something? And that is a percent. We don't need to move the decimal, okay? Because we started saying all of it was in there. 100%. All right. We're not going to really think about this one. You paid $5 a day for 100 days or $0.05 cents the first day, $0.10 cents the second day, and you get to work 100 days. This is way better than March, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get paid that well, okay? <laughs> okay, yeah, for the other one, it's like... All right, last question. Okay, guys, last question. If this is our dream university, the tuition is $3,000 a year, and it's going to only go up $150 every year that we're there. Shh, guys. We're going to go four years for our undergrad, three years to law school, and five years to get a PhD. Insane. That's another 12 years we're going to go to school after we graduate high school. I guess just because it's cheap to go there, we're going to do that, okay? How do we find the sum of 12 terms? You have to find the 12th term first. So 3,000 plus what? 11 times, yes, because this is the what we paid this year. So who's going to find that for me? Okay, that's our term, that's term 12. Okay, now what? 12 over 2 times the first year, which was plus the last year. 
And we get to graduate after 12 years of education with only owing how much? Mm, how much is it? Yeah, it's only like 45,000, right? All right, guys, the quiz is Tuesday. I'm going to go on to the next section unless you have questions on Monday off Worksheet 10. The quiz looks like Worksheet 10, so make sure you do Worksheet 10.